If there's one thing that is certain in astrophotography, it's issues. Lots of issues, constant issues, issues you could have never even imagined. And if you shoot with multiple rigs at night, this even multiplies. So what can we do about that? Let's discuss that today, right after the trailer. Hey, this is Fear Into Space, I'm Sasha from Switzerland. So grüß Sie miteinander and thanks for watching my channel. So if you might have looked me up on LinkedIn, then you know that I have about 25 years of experience in project and program management. And one of the main things to be successful in project management is proper risk and issue management. Because like here in any project, a lot of unforeseen things can happen and we have to deal with it and deal with it fast. And in astrophotography, not being able to deal with it fast means that you lose a night of precious starlight, at least when you're a cloud infested place like this here. So today I want to give you four tips that it's less likely that something happens, meaning risk mitigation, and three tips that you can easily resolve an issue when it already happened. And I will also give you a few examples how I dealt with it. So the first tip for risk mitigation is testing, 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 and not testing when it's a beautiful, moonless, clear night, but exploiting all the time that you have when it's cloudy, when it's rainy. So there's two types. First of all, you can test a lot inside. Does everything work? Does the focuser work? Does the filter wheel work? Does the camera work? Can everything be accessed by your software? Can you focus? Can you change the filter wheel? When you enter a go-to object, will it approximately move where you would imagine this object will be if you will be outside? Also balancing and so on. Good cable management. All of that you can do inside. You do not have to wait for good weather. And then the second thing is when it's clear sky, but the moon is full like it was this week. It was a little bit hazy plus the full moon, which means um, by all means you could not get any good picture. But I was every night outside because especially with my SCT, still had a lot of issues with guiding and so on. And also I was completely rebuilding my rig with SK-106. So all of that I tested in this week and I'm now ready if the moon gets smaller, if the sky is completely clear, that I can shoot. And I hope there will be no issues anymore. The second tip I can give you is documenting everything once your rig is stable. So if you're outside shooting and everything works fine, that's the moment to take your camera and shoot photo of your whole rig. For example, these two cables here, one is white, one is black. Quite honestly, if for whatever reason I would just have to snap them out after one minute, and probably even less, I would have no clue anymore if it's white, black or black, white, no clue. And then until you find that again, it takes forever and the night is over. If you have some photos of it, you just look at your photo. Oh, okay, that's it. And it's some trivial stuff like cable management. Suddenly you feel like after you changed something, the cables doesn't work well anymore. There's some entanglement dangers. If you once had it in an ideal situation, look it up. How did you thread through the cables at this point of time? So it sounds obvious, but it's worth a lot. And the same, by the way, with the software. Make screenshots of your settings. It might crash, there might be a version update. You might go to a complete other software, whatever. And there might be something you forgot to transfer from the settings. If you have it as screenshots, just look it up and in five minutes, the issue is solved. So third tip, go step by step if you do changes. Imagine you had a very basic rig and today the postman comes and brings an EAF and a filter wheel. Great, but don't install both at the same time. Install the EAF, test it, and chew the night or two or three with it. Get used to it and make sure that it works perfectly. Once it does, then add the filter wheel. 
and proceed the same. It is really difficult if you change a zillion things and an issue occurs. It takes a lot of effort then to figure out what is the root cause, because it could be like everything. So go step by step. And the last thing is risk mitigation, meaning decrease the likelihood that the risk gets into an issue. That obviously starts that you critically look at your rig and think about what could go wrong. And I know there's a lot which can go wrong. Well, make a list. Take that serious. Write all, all the risks that you see. Entanglement, for example. Something gets loose. Something gets defective. Something crashes and so on and so on. So what can you do about it? For example, and I also mentioned that in a recent other video, with my SCT, using the Sevo 585 MC Air is great from an internal sensor point of view, but sometimes it loses the guide star or even sometimes it's just not feasible guiding with it based on the conditions or based on a filter. So I know this risk. And based on that, as a risk mitigation, I added a guide scope which actually works pretty well. Also, for example, if you do not shoot on your own terrace, but if you go to a dark side, first of all, create a checklist so that you take everything with you. And if you have spare parts, like some of us have, perhaps take some of them with you, because if you have a second camera and one breaks, good to have the second one with it. If the battery gets empty, you have a second one, great, you have energy, and so on and so on. Or just basic things like cable. You might lose a cable, a cable you might step on one and it doesn't work anymore. Having a few cables with you doesn't really add any weight or volume, but it might save the night. Or it might even save the night for someone else who forgot a cable. So far about dealing with risks. But what if the issue is already there and something doesn't work anymore? And you're in the risk of losing the whole night. And the first and probably most important tip I can give you is don't panic. Because if you panic, the night is over. Let's put it like this. You can't think clear. If you go like, oh my God, oh my God. Now, what, what do I do? Most likely you will not figure it out what to do. So stay calm. You need to assess the situation. You need to think clear. You need to think logically. And remember that even an hour might not be a big thing if you can then shoot the rest of the night. So the second tip I can give you is how then to assess the situation. And it's something you might know under root cause analysis. And it's usually done in a situation like this based on exclusion. And I want to give you here a real example which happened just a few weeks ago with me. So as you might know, I got my SQA 106 and I did this crazy test with the FRA 400. So in the original setup, I had my ASI 2600 MC Air on it. So right, this setup that's now here. And I shot some photos with it. They, in principle, there was no issue at all, but it just didn't look so good. And that's when I realized I have to add the mono camera, the Moravian to it. So I did that, installed everything and shot again, same exact part of the sky, some photos with it. And that's the picture I came up with. As you can see, there's some huge issues in this picture. On one side, this whole race and on the other side, this line down here. What is this? So how can we figure out what this is all about? It could be like literally everything. So the first thing was, could it be some kind of a freak accident? Some special lighting which kind of hit the telescope and reflected and produced these issues. So to figure that out, I shot exactly with the same setups, everything the same, the night after that again. And I got the same result, which means it was not a freak accident. It was something was wrong. But what? So what did I know? I know it's not the telescope. And that's also why I did not mention it 
in the review. Why did I know it? Because it worked perfectly well with the Colicam. If it would be faulty, if there would be an issue, given it's the same sensor even, it would have shown up. So it's not the scope. Could it be the camera? Not really, because just right before, I shot with this camera on various other scopes and I never had this issue. So the camera, the camera was definitely not defective. Could it be filters? To figure that out, with mono, I anyway have the different filters. I looked at it and on every single channel picture, I had the same effect. So it was also not the filters. So was it a light leak? Well, could actually have been, it even looked like that. But also the second night when I shot, I actually covered the back of the scope with a towel, just to be sure. And it didn't change anything. So you see, there are already so many things I could exclude. And now it couldn't be everything anymore. There was almost everything excluded. So now looking at what was left, there was only one thing left. The Moravian camera had an integrated off-axis guider, which ironically I didn't even use because for 500 millimeters I prefer a guide scope. So there was a very high likelihood that in, because this SKS-106 has such a big light circle, that the light would actually hit this off-axis guider, reflect from it and create this issue. So what did I do? I ripped the off-axis guider out, ordered a plate there without the off-axis guider, and once this plate came, I tested it, and here it is. It's, it's not a good picture because of the full moon and I didn't use flats, but you see, the issue is gone. So that's how to deal with issues. Exclusion step by step by step, very structured, and eventually you will get to the root cause of it. And by the way, never take the easy way. Because the easy way would have been kind of like, okay, probably it's just when there's a very bright star close by. So let's take some other part of the sky. And if it doesn't happen there, then, you know, it's not an issue. But that might have happened. But then definitely in some situation, it would have been again an issue. And I would have lost a second or third opportunity to shoot a nice picture. So now I was lucky and I solved my issue, but what if it doesn't help? If you're clueless, at least you have already gathered a wealth of information. What it couldn't be, what it likely could be, or at least what it couldn't be. And that leads me now to my last tip, and that's quite obvious, get help. And quite ironically, the fastest help and probably the most competent help that you can get is ChatGPT. And while this proposition probably half a year or a year you might have laughed at, in our days, that's pretty spot on. I use it constantly for questions I have, evaluations I want to do, and usually it's a huge help. But again, what you did before, the step-by-step -step assessment, the exclusion, the testing, that helps because that's now all the stuff that you can feed at GPT. So it doesn't have to widely guess around, but having so much information, there's a very high likelihood that it identifies the issue or at least some potential issues for you. If that does not help, even some people hate it, Facebook groups usually are pretty good. They are the usual trolls. There are some people who have no clue and still want to help you. But usually compared to Cloudy Nights, quite obviously, I prefer the Facebook groups. Cloudy Night usually just leads to 20 pages of very well-meant advice, which is very contradictory. And at the end, you know less than before. And with Facebook, sometimes I have a feeling People are very kind, very helpful, and um, you might get some valuable advice. But last but not least, if you want someone to help you solve your issue, someone you can talk to, did you know that I have a Patreon channel? And for my patrons, 
I'm always there and very happy to help them with the issues they have. Love space, love this channel, then you'll love what's going on over on my Patreon. Behind the scenes content, early access, breaking news, exclusive tutorials, tips and tricks just for you, all for the price of a coffee. Go deeper, follow stories as they unfold, get personal support, and download all the supporting docs and data. Join our crew of space enthusiasts, support the channel, fuel the mission, and unlock a universe of extras. Links below. See you there. So I hope that's both helpful and you have less issues from now on. And if you have issues, then they will be gone as soon as possible. If you have good examples, experiences, or additional tips, please leave it in the comment below. See you next time and clear skies.